Hello and welcome to another quick look. This time we are taking a look at the City Skylines by Colossal Order, a small company from Finland. And the game is published by Paradox Interactive. And uh, the game is a city builder and it's very much in the way of SimCity. And uh, people are saying this is the SimCity, the SimCity should have been. And uh, I kind of tend to agree on that, but let's go through the mechanics of the game and I'll show you how things work. So if you are familiar with city builders and especially SimCity, you know uh, a lot how this game works already. So there is uh, different road systems you can build in the game. Let's go quickly through those, those and I'll show you how road building works. As a tool is a very uh, flexible and you can do a lot of things with it, but it's also very very easy and simple to use. So firstly we have here uh, two lane roads. There's uh, three different roads uh, with uh, just a plain road with a greenery on the side and then, then some trees. Same on the two uh, one-way uh, roads with two lanes and then a gravel road. Then we have uh, three uh, four-lane road, sorry, with the same three different ones. Then we have uh, six-way uh, six-lane roads with the same uh, as the other roads. So three different ones and three different ones for one ways. And then we have highways with uh, just a plain highway, sound barriers and uh, highway ramp. And then we have intersections, and intersections are these cool things you can build, and crazy things that people already have made with these, these amazing diamond shaped, strange intersections where you can go to different directions with your car. And uh, as you can see the uh, from these examples I'll show you here, so for example this road here, the road making tool is very very flexible, all of this was uh, made by me by hand, all these uh, a bit wonky circles and everything, but you can layer the roads, you can make all kinds of uh, connections between each other. I have another example here, where the circles are actually much more round as well, and uh, it's also kind of multi-layered. So you can do very flexible road systems in the game, and transportation management is actually a very big part of the game. It, it's not just uh, building your city, but also building the road systems and managing traffic and that is a very very big part of the game And it shows uh, that the developers of this game made Cities in Motion 1 and 2 before this game As a part of that experience definitely have split into this game and you have to Deal with public transportation, all this uh, traffic between uh, housing, commercial, industrial and your different uh, regions of the map And it is uh, actually really really fun, I really like uh, Firstly, watching the cars go around Loop, loop. Let me actually po unpause the game and we'll so see how the cars go around in the traffic circle here. It's really fun. Firstly designing uh, this road system and then seeing how they work. This one uh, does get some traffic. Uh, but there are some some issues with this. Uh, mainly because uh, where people are going and where, are, where they are com coming from. So tending to their needs uh, is also important. For example, I think uh, most of the shopping and uh, a large living area is on this side, but on the other hand, all the industry and uh, jobs are on the other side of the town. So this uh, generates a lot of traffic between the housing and the shops to, to the workplaces, and then uh, they also bring deliveries, like this uh, donut van is returning to the facility. I think there might be, let's see, this one maybe, is uh, delivering goods to a shop. So there is this back and forth traffic between those, and you have to design your road systems well to deal with cope with that and this was my attempt to deal with deal with it on this map actually about the, about the map the map is uh, that what I'm showing you is actually uh, Helsinki which is the capital of Finland and uh, the map editor is really powerful and I'll go through that a bit more in a moment but it allows you to make uh, basically your own maps so let me show you the road tool now like I was saying so, building a road is very simple, you just click a place, you drag a road, you sh see the kind of box around the, on the sides of the roads, that's where you can uh, build your housing, so you can uh, zone them now here, to the side here, if you want to, we'll dezone them for a moment, because I'm gonna blow up the road here, so that was just uh, one of the straight road tools, there's also toggle snapping, which allows you to build them much better. Then we have uh, this uh, curved road, so it's very easy to just uh, curve the road, you choose where it kind of angles and then you 
choose where it goes and it tries to kind of angle around that corner and making even uh, perfect circles with these tools is uh, very very easy with the snapping tool and the curved road you just click, click the place and then you have these uh, guide, tool, guide lines here so you just uh, click on the guide line you click on another guide line and you keep going going around like this and we have a almost perfect circle it's sloping a bit because of the land there but there we go so making a uh, round roads all kinds of di different uh, wonky roads and everything is very very nice you can also use the free freehand tool which allows you to do all kinds of things and uh, the road uh, really can work with the terrain as well as you can see it automatically makes bridges uh, it uh, doesn't really deform the terrain too much and it just uh, tries to hug the terrain as well as possible and uh, we have used that uh, on this map that we've been playing on my live stream on many many places where uh, for example here it just goes all along the coast houses and then goes up the hill down the hill and there are some elevation changes here and same in here in, in this area there's all kinds of different roads going on different levels and different uh, angles in here so it's, it's very very powerful to use the road making tool in this game it also has uh, different levels so you can um, let me show you different let's do the, just a, st a straight road so let's put one road there that's the be ground level then we have the next level and the next level and the next level it's just increasing levels and one more level <clears throat> and these can also cross over each other as long as you just have kind of get the pylons in the right place so that they don't uh, cross each other and we can do all kinds of things with this Our horrible horrible traffic messes so there you see the power of the road tool that's in this game it's very 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 cool that's uh, that's the roads basically and then you have the RCI and the usual residential commercial industry and you also have additional offices zone which is basically a specialized industry for highly educated population which doesn't pollute or anything and uh, uh, when you build roads you get these uh, areas here around the side of the road where you can click click on them to queue housing and when there is need for housing they will build the house there there is also uh, this area paint tool which you can use you can easily just uh, dezone as well if there is houses built in this area in this uh, area and you dezone the area the house will be demolished and we can do low density housing or residential high density residential same on the commercial and then uh, industrial and the offices you also can use these uh, kind of paint tools where you can just paint the area yourself and you can do just a like one building there and a couple buildings here and you can really control which kind of building you build where of course this kind of neighborhood is massively bad as uh, pollution from the industries and all that is not good for the residential areas let's go next i'll skip the next tool i'll show it a bit more then you have the usual power management of the game of the city games so you have multitude of different uh, power uh, generation plants wind turbines coal oil hydro electric dams solar power nuclear power and uh, the fusion power plant which is the ultimate tool for that then you have a uh, water system management so you need a uh, water pumps or water towers to uh, give a uh, drinking water to your city and you also need to deal with uh, waste uh, water basically poo in the pipes and you have a water treatment plant as well which you can use to deal with the water and uh, i think we have uh, some of that in here so here are some of my water treatment plants dealing with the waste management of the city and it actually pollutes the area around it so you have to be careful not to place your drinking water pipes which I have here or your water towers in a polluted area because uh, that will get your city very very sick and very very dead very qu quickly then you have gar garbage to deal with so pretty much everything generates garbage especially industry and you need to either landfill it or you can incinerate it for a more power generation and get rid of the garbage you can even empty the landfills if you have a good amount of incineration available you can just burn all the trash and don't have to worry about it anymore and can 
get rid of your landfills. Then we have uh, healthcare, so you have clinics and hospitals to deal with healthcare issues, which can come from uh, sicknesses, like if you drink wastewater or uh, even uh, noise pollution can create a sickness, which you have to deal with. Then you have uh, cemeteries and crematories, crematoriums, sorry, which you can use to deal with uh, basically deaf people. People will die regardless due to old age and a lot of reasons as well. So you need to uh, have cemeteries and how somehow tend to the deceased as well. And uh, next you have uh, fire departments. So you can do fire de department, like small house and then, then station for a bigger area. And same for the police as well. And I should also explain a bit about this uh, colorization when you, this overlay when you click on this. So these big pillars are the currently existing uh, firehouses and uh, you can see from the house color up here where the risk of a risk of fire is uh, bigger. So basically blue is good and red is uh, bad in all of these overlays in here. And uh, you also see that some of the roads are green. So in addition to just uh, helping an area, you need to kind of see where uh, your patrol routes go. So if you have one-way road, you can only go into one way. So it doesn't, uh, like in some uh, older city builders, when you plop down a, a, a fire a house or a police uh, station, it just uh, helps a certain area, like a radius of a circle around uh, the station. In this one, you actually have to worry about how the roads go and how the traffic goes. And uh, green uh, roads so show where they actually are able to patrol at the moment. So you've seen there is actually some areas of the map there the, the police cannot actually get to. And those are bad for criminal activity, of course. And also, if a fire department cannot get to some part of town due to bad road planning or just being too far away, it's it's not really good. Uh, let me see if I can... Uh, I guess the police station is the easier way to show because there's an area here. So when you place a police station you see this uh, road suddenly turn uh, green instead of the grey it's uh, normally and we can place it there and there's a wave of happiness which comes from having police and other services then we have education so you need to educate your population or you don't need to educate your population is an option as well uh, there's uh, three different levels there's elementary school high school and uh, university you can use and depending on which kind of industry and uh, if, if you are going for offices, you can educate your population. Of course, it makes population more happy. But if you want to build, let's say, a small industri industry town where uh, there is no high education and everyone works on a low paying uh, industry jobs in a forestry or, or farming, that is very possible. You don't, you don't have to always have high educated everyone working in the offices type of metropolis. Then we have public transportation, and there's five types of pu public transport in the game. There's buses, and we have bus routes here going on around the, uh, this area, and there, and there, and pretty much everywhere. Buses are very important to use. Then we have a metro system, and it's the more darker lines going around in the circles here. That's the metro system we have at the moment. Then you have trains, and you have a passenger and cargo terminals. And we have a rail system going in here. There's the station, it goes through the green line here, out of town and into the areas up here. We can actually see, see the trains as well. Here's one of the trains going around on the rails. This is a passenger train. You can also click on uh, trains and everything. Uh, everything movable uh, or moving in the map, like the cars, trains, planes, boats, uh, pedestrians, cats, dogs, pl uh, even seagulls, you can click on this uh, green button here to follow them. So if you are a, say, train enthusiast, you can build some interesting rail systems and watch your uh, trains go around on the map here. Or you, you can uh, pick a car from there, we'll follow the forester truck here instead and see where, where this guy is going. And this is a very, very nice system. Also, as you can notice, this uh, railroad... Uh, or the train is a different color and you can actually modify the lines here and you can change the line color and you can see uh, also what kind of passengers are going in there and what kind of car trips saved and uh, how, how efficient this is so you can change the color here pick any color really you want and uh, it changes the color of the line in here it changes also all the 
vehicles on that line. All the buses and uh, trains and everything turns into a different color. I uh, currently have, don't have boats on this map, but there is uh, boats in the game. Uh, boats have a route on the map, so this is the boat route in here that goes on the kind of side of the map. And it needs to connect to one of your tiles. So in here I have a connection to the boats and it needs to connect to the route it goes. So you cannot just blindly place a boat like here because uh, it doesn't uh, path through there. So I can only place like uh, boats down here for cargo and passengers. Well, this is actually where the harbor is in real life in Finland, and I tried to model the line because of that, like that. Then you have planes, which I don't actually have enough money for at the moment, and uh, the airport is fairly small, and it also uses a route around the map. I actually don't have a connection inside this, uh, this tile. The real airport goes around in this area, in Helsinki. And it also uses the same kind of uh, connection as the boats use, and you need to have the connection to do that. Then we have uh, parks in here, so you can build uh, different parks, like this one, and it increases happiness and land value, so you just plop these in on the side of the road there, else just like that. And then you have pedestrian paths, and these uh, were very surprising for me. They actually are very beneficial. So here is one of the elevated uh, pedestrian paths I made, and you can see that there is actually quite a lot of people uh, going over this thing, uh, between the neighborhood over the highways here. And you can also, as I said, you can also click on the pedestrians here, you can follow them, see where they are going, you can even name them, let's name this after me, this lady, and you can see where they live and where they are going, and so you can actually track them quite well. What they're doing and what they're working on and all that. You can even uh, follow them around the town when they use public transport. So you can click on a guy, see them go into a bus, you can follow the bus, you can see them go come out of the bus, move to metro, go to the train and all that. So it's, it's really really cool. And then we have uh, unique buildings. These are kind of like the achievement system of the game. So there's uh, six tires of uh, unique buildings, plus the ones I've actually gotten from the Steam Workshop. And uh, you need to do certain things to unlock these. Like, uh, let's say, this courthouse, you need to have crime rate of over 50%. And there are some other ones, like uh, Business Park, 20,000 square, so of a commercial zone, seven universities, and such. And uh, these unlock uh, over playthroughs, so this 50% uh, crime rate, you, you can do it on uh, one map. And then you have this unlocked for the other maps as well. And these are part of the unlock system for the uni. Uh, I mean the monuments. And monuments are the, like the wonder buildings of the game. And if you look at the unique buildings like this one, the Modern Art Museum, it says uh, it's required for building a fusion power plant. This one is required for medical center. This one is required for the space elevator, and so on. High Hadron Collider and uh, Eden Project, and. Uh, these are usually uh, help for leisure purposes and other purposes, uh, well, as, as can see, be seen easily. Opera House gives uh, entertainment to the and leisure facilities for the city. And uh, these monuments uh, differ from these, uh, uh, so that uh, they basically get rid of one of your needs in the town. The Hadron Collider, for example, provides education to your whole city pretty much in that area. It's a very massive area. The fusion power plant produces insane amounts of power, so you can, don't have to deal with the power. Uh, medical plan, uh, medical department, whatever the hell was, uh, deals with basically healthcare on all, most all of the city, and so on and so on. So that's basically what you build normally. And you may have seen and noticed these uh, names around here everywhere. These are actually the districts uh, in real Helsinki, plus a couple other ones we added, just for fun. Like, gets felt doesn't really exist in there. But anyways, uh, so this is the district tool, I'll show you in this area. It's kind of empty. Actually, let's use the, my horrible road system here. So, district tool is uh, like a paint tool, same way as the uh, you, how you paint housing. But you can do this uh, basically free form wherever you want. And it paints an area like this. It gives you the name, which you can rename. We'll call this uh, Quick Look Road Hell. And uh, it allows you to build these uh, districts uh, all around the map. And um, you can. Uh, 
two policies per district. You also see information based on the district, uh, like what kind of population lives there, housing uh, levels, what kind of industries and whatever is, how, how the zone is distributed, average land value and all that. And then you can do uh, policies in those. So policies are uh, basically services, taxation and city planning. Uh, so instead of uh, doing like a citywide uh, policies in, and taxation, in this one you can do uh, per district. And districts are paintable wherever you want. So it's a really flexible way to kind of, kind of control how your city grows and what kind of um, city you have going on. So for example here we have power usage and water usage uh, affecting things. Bed pan, recycling, smoking bans, and all kinds of things. Recreational use of drugs, free public transportation, uh, raised taxes, lower taxes in areas, city planning for uh, businesses, industrial, high tech housing, high rise ban, and heavy traffic ban. And I'm sure uh, these are going to get expanded later on as well. And also with the uh, district tool, you can specialize industry. So these are the different industries you can do. There is generic industry, which you don't need to actually add because it's, uh, it's the basic one. Then you have oil industry, so you just click on there. And now that this is uh, dedicated for oil industry, you can click on this. Now it's dedicated for mining, farming, and forestry. And uh, you need specific areas to do those. So you can check the overlays up here. There's all kinds of information available here. Crime rate, transport, traffic. But this is the one we are looking for at the moment. Natural resources. So the yellow here is a fertile land where you can build uh, farming areas. Green is forest, so you build forestry areas there. Blue is the ore where you can build mining industry. And the black is uh, oil for oil industry. And for example here we have a couple of the different industries. This is just a general industry here. These uh, smoke pipes and uh, fish stick factories. And then we have a uh, farming in here, so there's orchards and different kinds of uh, that's a firehouse, juice presses, red deal sliced fruit, and uh, there's also farming, cows, piggy, beaks, and uh, stuff like that. And then we have mining industry in here, so there's uh, ore crushers and uh, uranium and stuff like that. And so you can specialize your industry in that way as well. Down here, uh, other information you have, you have the date, speed, your city information, you can look through this. Your, this is kind of like the information about the district, but you can see the whole city's information in one go. With this, we have actually a pretty good uh, level on the shops there. Should improve it a bit more. And um, there's a demand for residential, commercial, industry. There's only a bit of industry, industry in my demand at the moment. There's my money, my weekly income, my population, and my my weekly change and also the global happiness. You can also look at the economy here a bit more carefully. You can tax uh, areas based on the density and type of uh, well, type of area. And there's a uh, income and tax expenses uh, breakdown here so you can see how much you're getting from the residential, commercial, industry and uh, uh, public transport. And you can also see the distribution between levels of housing here. So we have a uh, Quite a lot of level 3s, giving a lot of money. And then some others. Same with the, these, I guess, level 2s and not too much level 1s and 3s. And you can see the office. You can see also, also how much you're getting money out of uh, your different uh, public transportation. It seems uh, my metros are actually doing pretty good compared to the other ones. And then you have your expenses. So there's roads and pretty much everything. That's costing you money, and you can see also the same distribution of the public transport here, or all of these. Then you can do budgeting, so you can increase or lower budgets. I have pretty good uh, budget on garbage and parks at the moment, and you can deal with these as you wish. You can also take some loans, and you pay them off like uh, in a small instances constantly from your weekly income, or you can pay, pay them back on a lump sum if you wish. And sometimes these are very important and necessary to use. And then we have uh, the city policies again here. And uh, you can do these citywide as well. So this is the place where you do them citywide instead of uh, doing them by district by district. So you can you can do citywide tax rates for offices, and it adds to all 
uh, districts. And of course there's a bulldozing and there's a free camera mode as well, so you can get a free camera around and do, do some epic screenshots and stuff like that with that. And also this is the achievement milestone system. So there's different uh, city sizes and they unlock new buildings. Uh, this is a pretty large city and I have everything else except the monuments unlocked for this city. But for example Little Hamnet opens you elementary school and medical clinic at Dunfield. So when you start the game you have very, no, well, not, well not very, but fairly limited option what you can do. It's actually pretty educational uh, and kind of tutorial way into the game. So you start with building a couple roads, a few housing, some commercial, small industries. Then you get schools uh, as you level up the city. You get the medical clinics, landfills, and you get these new needs, which you need to then to. Then you grow the city again a bit more. You get uh, specialization, districts, you get uh, police, firehouse, you need to start de dealing with those issues. Then you Next, move to the next level, you need high schooling, you move to the next level, you need to start thinking about how your highways are done, how your public transport work, you need to start worrying about people getting old in your city, and so on and so on. And so it, uh, it's kind of nicely built on in the difficulty as you grow bigger in the city. So you start fairly simple and it goes more and more complex. So it's kind of tutorialish way all the time. Uh, you can also enable in the options, in the modding option, uh, and have all of this unlocked from start. If you feel like uh, you don't want to start a new city and have to deal with all this again, you can go from start. Also, if you wish for a sandbox mode, you can go and uh, enable infinite money from the modding tools. And you can do, do both of those mid-game at any point, so you don't have to do them at the start of the map. You can change the money on and off whenever you feel like. If you need to fix, for example, an issue, which I, I had an issue, issue with on this map, uh, I ran out of money and the city would have died because I didn't have connection to the water pipes and I had to go and enable the infinite money, fix the small pipe issue and uh, then I went back and disabled the mod. And then there's the unique buildings here and also monuments and uh, there's achievements also for the game. Let's see, what else can we explain? That's pretty much everything you can do in this game, uh, but it, it is very, very good uh, and complex city builder game, and uh, I highly recommend checking it out. Let's go out of here. I'm gonna go to the main menu, and I'll show you some of the things in here in about the modding and uh, the map editor and stuff like that. But I, I don't. I'm not gonna go into great detail because I have other videos I'll link them below the, uh, this video if you want to take a closer look into the tools and stuff so in here you can do map editor and the map editor allows you to create your dream maps and it has uh, some epic features like uh, height map importing from real uh, world uh, height maps like that one the map I was playing was the Helsinki height map and you can do re very realistic cities at, at least uh, for the landscape with this uh, map editor as you can just import basically whatever uh, real world map people are also were discussing already importing about like a height map of a moon and stuff like that and there is already a bunch of them available online in different sites and uh, then there is an asset editor as well in this game and you can build your own houses, you can build your own parks, you can build your own intersections, your citizens, all kinds of things and this will make sure that there's gonna be just insane amounts of content for the game uh, as time passes. There's already a ton of, as you can see here, there's already a ton of uh, maps available in the Steam Workshop that you can use and uh, Steam Workshop and the map and the asset editor are all just already uh, kind of bundled and uh, in included into the game and uh, work really, really well. There is actually my Helsinki map, the one I was showing you of, just without any buildings, and also a Rorvik map which I made and played on stream earlier. So I I've shared a couple of the maps I made uh, in the workshop. And then you have a content manager here where you have all your uh, maps, these are the maps I have, so it is this simple, you make a map, you go into the content manager, you press the share button here, and you get some information done, and you press publish, and done, it is in the workshop for everyone to use, same with the save games, assets, I've actually downloaded a couple of them from the workshop, 
these churches and old university and stuff. I have a couple parking spaces and roundabouts and I've done my selfish I could share. Then there's mods. These are uh, actually the mods uh, that are with the game. So there's hard mode. I have a video for that as well if you are interested uh, what the hard mode does. Check that uh, below this uh, video. And uh, unlimited money and uh, unlock all as I was uh, explaining earlier. And then there's the Steam Workshop information there as well. I'll also show you the options for the game. So there's a uh, full screen uh, mode, uh, of course, and window. There's good uh, resolution options. It's uh, also having all of these nice widescreen options. If you go 16 by 9 or 16 by 10, I highly appreciate it at 16 by 9 and good resolutions are available because of uh, recording videos and uh, streaming purposes. There's uh, the, all the levels of details and stuff. Uh, as you can see, I, I had uh, them fairly low because my PC is not the best and uh, recording this video and streaming. It's kind of taxing on the PC, but the game is uh, by normally it's a uh, very very well optimized and you can actually run in fairly good manner in even on a lower end PCs. I can pump this up uh, all the way to high if I'm not streaming or recording videos, so it's it's very nice. And you can also uh, um, change the amount of tilt shift, which which kind of is uh, how much uh, blur you get when you look at the uh, longer distances. So it's kind of meant to like a uh, make it look more realistic and you can adjust that to a varying degree where you want to be, it to be. Then there's the audio, of course, good uh, audio options. Gameplay options, you can do edge scrolling, you can uh, keep behind all the things you want, whatever you want. And then there's language options here, good language options and I'm sure uh, these are gonna be added more. And there's the how to open chirper message and tutorial messages and you can reset your stuff here. Uh, one thing I wanted to show you as well was... What was it? Yes, uh, starting a new map. That's the thing I wanted to show. So you have the maps here. So let's open the Helsinki for example or Rorvik Norway. So you see a screenshot of the map here. You can see choose your city name and this is where you choose a uh, which uh, type of traffic you have your, on your map. So by default it's the right hand traffic and you can change it to the right, uh, left hand if you wish. You also see the information, how much resources are on the map, what kind of connections there is also on the map, how much water and what kind of suitable area there is for building. If you compare these. Um, I actually highly recommend if you are getting the game and uh, you are more experienced with city builders, uh, don't start on any of these uh, basic maps that come with the game. They are very f kind of flat and kind of boring. I would highly recommend uh, firing up the ma map editor and making your own map from a height map or checking out uh, some of the Steam Workshop maps that are already available because landscapes like these, all these mountains and uh, different shapes make building so much more interesting than on a flat surface like this. But of course, if you are not very experienced with city builders, you might want to start with one of these and uh, kind of experiment and uh, learn the game first before you tackle more uh, challenging terrain. But basically, that's my quick, uh, quickish look at uh, City Skylines. It is the city builder we've been waiting for, really, and I highly recommend by getting it if you are interested in any way in city building games. And uh, it's gonna be supported long into the future. Uh, currently, there's no tunnels uh, at the time of making this video and at the release and uh, European city, European buildings, but those are coming as a free DLC later on, before uh, kind of early summerish time. And they are going to support the game with uh, kind of Crusader Kings 2 or U4 style expansions, if you know how Paradox usually does uh, a DLC. So it's the uh, big expansions, uh, which, which are of course uh, paid expansions, you need to pay for them. But usually when they, well, Almost always when they release one of those big expansions, which adds new mechanics and stuff into the game, it also adds uh, part of those uh, expansions as a free update to the game. So, that's gonna be part free updates, part paid uh, big expansions, uh, which will be really, really nice. I highly, highly support the Paradox DLC and how, how they do it, and um, I'm sure I'll be grabbing every possible DLC that comes this game's way, and also I'll be checking out your guys' Steam Workshop buildings and trying them out as well. But thanks for watching. This is a bit longer video this time. And check out my other quick look videos. My 
uh, twitch.tv slash Spelunner channel where I stream uh, games like this and I, actually this game will be very very streamed in the future and uh, also follow me on Twitter in the Steam group in YouTube and in Twitch for all this content but anyways thanks for watching I'll see you guys next time